What's going on everybody? It's your boy John for the Game Doe here today with a special upload for you today as today we're gonna be tackling Ultra Moon. The only difference is it's gonna be with Cutie Fly only as you can tell by the fact that you got the Cutie Fly gift in the corner. We got Kakui talking to us about how our adventure is gonna be so fantastic, so amazing. I just, I don't believe everybody telling me this is going to be super amazing because of the fact that Cutie Fly is really only known for its speed status. You can see right there, it is 84 base speed. It's okay, but that's its only really redeemable factor. It's got a good moveset. It's got everything else, which is fantastic as we get to pick it right here as we get to pick a name for this thing. And we're going to pick and name this thing Squad because if you join and subscribe today, you will be able to join the Gamer Squad hit us to 600 make my day anyway gotta get them claps in there as we chose quote quote rowlet no we got our cutie fly and the reason why cutie fly was in the rowlet spot i was kind of dumb i totally thought that how would be smart and actually pick something that we actually are weak against no how's just dumb and just can't do any of that so unfortunately we kind of kill how instantaneously as we walk up to lily and lily's like okay well i don't know what to do like I can't fight the Spiro, so we need to destroy the Spiro. It's okay. We're good. Out here, Tapu Koko saves us from death as we get the Sparkling Stone. I that didn't really do anything, but that's okay. Is they're going to talk to us. Freaking Hala and Kakui are like, oh, you should go on this adventure because that's amazing. I'm so glad you're on this adventure. Woo! So then our mom talks to us, and she's like, okay, well, I'm so glad you got a Pokemon now. You should probably go talk to the professor to learn how to catch Pokemon. So, of course, the professor comes out, teaches us how to catch Pokemon very easily, and then we meet Solaria, which is going to be an annoying person in this run because she has a poison dragon type. Cutie Fly hates being hit physically, and poison types suck anyway, so... And she's gonna be annoying but how fights us again with his pichu and his pichu is not a problem we just kind of can spam fairy wind and he just he doesn't really pose much of a threat so we kind of get rid of how very easily as his poplio still doesn't pose much of a threat it really wouldn't have been if it was in Cinnamon anyway or um linton excuse me but it's okay as we got the z power ring we're not gonna use the z moves i'm sorry i just something we're not gonna do as far as healing items we're not gonna use those either so really it's gonna be very difficult our mom sends us off on the adventure and honestly i'm excited to get on this adventure as we get to see kukui doing some fun things with rock ruff ah I see, I see you, Kukui. I see right through you. Anyway, we continue this as he explains us the Rotom decks. We go to the trainer school. Our first real instance of trainers. Honestly, he ha Kukui just has a weird obsession with the number four because we have to fight four trainers, but that's okay. So... I don't even know. Our first real problem was with the leader of the trainer school. He has an Ekans. And here's a prime example of freaking this poison types being a issue he hits us we can't hit him super effectively and you know we paralyze him hoping to stall turns and eh, he doesn't get paralyzed once which is fine we get to go train and have some fun so as we're training we really want to get to like a level like 11 or so i think it was 10 is when we what we finally kind of compromised to because it's about on par with him we beat him and then the litten comes out and of course, Litten, this is what we were talking about is Litten being a pain because we had to try multiple times to beat the trainer, the teacher, I think three times. We finally beat her at level 14 as that's the totems level, which is unfortunate. As Lima gets to talk to us, Lima's like, hey, you should go battle me at the pier. So, of course, what do we do? We battle him at the pier. And Lima's got a young goose. Not a problem. Lima kind of is a normal type trainer, which is very, very refreshing at this point as we have Fairy Wind now, so we can kind of heal ourselves a little bit, which is awesome. Or, uh, Draining Kiss, excuse me which heals us and it kind of that's going to be a saving grace for a little while i mean we can't really use it too much as late game but that's totally fine as we get to go to the beach beach let's go get away as we get interrupted for our beach vacation from freaking skull grunts now skull grunts is going to be another team that's going to be kind of a pain this one's not because it's got a psychic type but that's okay they're gonna be a pain because they have a lot of poison types so we got to have a way to prep for them luckily later in the game we get psychic so we have a way to prep for them as we're about to go into the first totem and before we go to the first totem i have a couple people to thank we got j rose 11 for starting the trend but dry bread for making it a lot more popular chill and plays out here helping me out making sure this is good aaron helping me out as well same with papa all our awesome people that are going to be in the description below but we're going to take on our first totem we kind of obliterate it it's a dark normal type this island is actually very friendly to cutie fly not too many problems other than that trainer school person but that's okay so a very kind place for cutie fly kind of can roam around no wonder why they inhabit the island we got our first totem 
as we're gonna be walking into Seaward Cave, and walking to Seaward Cave, we have Solaria! But luckily, Solaria at this point only has a fur frow, so we're totally fine. We actually have no issues. I was I was expecting Poipal already, but that's fine. So we get to fight How for the second time already. We're gonna have a familiar face the entire playthrough as we have Struggle Bug now, and Struggle Bug lowers the special attacks out, which is totally perfectly fine. We'll take that 100% as we kind of beat How pretty quickly. And then after that, Kakui talks to us about how it were awesome. We take on Hala, and Hala's got a fighting type team. So we're quad resisted, and we do super effective damage. So honestly, no problems at all with Hala. Our draining kiss kind of just destroys him, and we're totally fine. As he even has a crab brawler that uses a Z move right now, and we have to cut that out because no copyright, please. And yeah, so we totally kind of just did work, and we did what we needed to do, and we were totally fine. And so after that, we get to go Mantine surfing. Let's go. <laughs> we don't actually surf. We do nothing. As we come against the first trainer in the second island, I think it's Melee Melee Island, and. The Glaceon ends up being more of a problem than I expected it to. So we're going to train up a little bit and go against this guy who has a yawn. And sleeping moves are going to be a pain because we cannot stall turns. That's not a kind of a good thing that we can do. But we end up losing to him and we finally end up beating him, I think, at level 23. And being level 23 was awesome. I think part of the reason was we got the boosts. And those boosts were very helpful. I don't know what we got the boosts from, but we got the boosts somewhere. And we defeated him at level 23, so now we can go fight this Glaceon again and hopefully be totally fine, as we are. As we go to Route 4, we sit here and wait and save, obviously, because gotta you can't save lost data. And we gotta go ahead and fight um, How again, as How has a new Pokemon, uh, I can't remember what the... Brion. And Brion kind of wasn't too much of a threat either, and his team's still really not strong enough to take us on yet but it will be soon don't worry as gladian it's our first time with the gladian gladian starts out with zubat and i was like oh great zubat fun and then i realized it was actually zora and i was like of course it is and so his zubat ends up becoming a big problem and i don't think i would ever say that in my entire life but zubat was an issue and so we had to train up for this dang Zubat of all things uh and you know we did our work and now we have to go against the totem iraq winded I thought I was gonna fly by this very easily, and uh, this kind of proved me wrong. I had to attempt this like 25 to 30 times in order to get myself to actually do it correctly because this stupid Masquerade had Tailwind, which is gonna double everything's speed, which is not good. It also has Icy Wind, which lowers my speed too. So, like, it was a conundrum of speed drops, and when your remote redeeming quality is speed, that's kind of a problem. So the only reason we won was because this Dewpider ended up being the Mon that came out first instead of the Masquerade. So we were able to kind of stall out enough to where we were gaining enough health to kill the Totem Aragwinded first other than the Dewpider and it ended up working out. So of course he's going to call in the Masquerade, but the Masquerade is not a problem when I take out everything with the Roosting and all that stuff. So we did teach Roost because that's what we got the TM from the guy that we defeated earlier. So, Roost was actually came in very helpful, as this Masquerade doesn't have anything yet, but Masquerade will be a problem later when it learns Air Slash and stuff like that. As we end up going to take on Solaria, and here's the first instance of the Poipool. And the Poipool, this time, didn't pose as much of a threat, because we're kind of a little overleveled for this. We're 10 levels above her, so that's part of the reason why everything kind of worked out. And then we get to go to the Battle Royale Dome. And this Battle Royale Dome, again, it's not a fight that you need to complete, but... We kind of just destroyed it, so I figured I would show that off a little bit as we go to the most difficult one yet. And my buddy Aaron's mascot said, what's going on, guys? And destroyed the entirety of my freaking cutie fly, unfortunately. So we have to go against the Totem Mar Marowak. And Totem Marowak literally was the bane of my existence. I thought we would be 100% fine, but no we were terrible because now we have a salazzle which is poison fire type which is quad resisted to us big pains big problems and we had to go up to level 
50. And even at level 50, there was absolutely no way we could destroy this totem, which was very unfortunate. We got poisoned here, but it didn't even matter. The little amount of damage we were doing just was not enough. We even have Quiver Dance at this point, trying to use Quiver Dance to protect the de detect. And still, that didn't matter until we were level 55. So now we're over leveled for like most of the rest of the game at this point. And we're only 10 minutes in, so gotta snack that rap after revenue you know anyway this this totem was way too easy we one shot this thing it was like bye mallow you're no threat as we get to go ahead and how tells us oh guess what we can actually go talk to the professor's wife and it's like oh the professor has a wife okay and then we talk to olivia and olivia's probable pass is like hey if you go over to the beach you can get evie light so we got to evie light as we're gonna have to fight plumeria now another team skull grunt that poses a threat as whoop de doo da she has a gold bat freaking poison again and then she also has a land it which is kind of funny because we fought a slazzle earlier so why not have a slazzle now but whatever cool we defeat her she's not even that much of a problem lily heals us up for the impending grand trial with olivia olivia actually has a little bit of a team i mean her first two months aren't great but then he her uh, lichen rock freaking wanted to make sure that you freaking continental crushed that like button so i can get into the youtube algorithm let's go anyway we got destroyed so we had to go back again and finally she used a super potion stupidly and we won so good job ai for being terrible yeah um anyway so olivia kind of gets to tell us that we get to go to the aether foundation and of course the aether foundation looks so nice and dandy on the inside everything looks so appealing but, you know, we all know what happens later in the game. As this new Lego is like, oh, <laughs> I'm a rock poison type. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to destroy you. And I'm like, um, unfortunately, you're not because you're a special attacker. But if you were a physical attacker, that'd be an issue. But we ended up actually living on one because of a crit, which was insane. Cutie fly coming in clutch as we decide that we're going to go ahead and get the TM for psychic. Thank you, Professor Wick. You did it. As um, This is where Hal kind of ultimately destroys us. But I had to show it off because... I totally forgot to save because I was like, oh, how doesn't fight us? It's not like that's exactly where I died in the sleep block, but whatever. I do a lot of just other things like Nuzlocke's and extreme randomizers and live Nuzlocke's and everything else. I do a lot of the stuff as far as YouTube goes and, you know, whatever's clever, right? Is this, he's like, oh, it's okay. I don't care that I swept you. It's fine. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure it's fine. But anyway... Yeah, we do a lot of YouTube stuff, so gotta do some challenging RPG games, and if you were entered to that, then good on you. I'm happy for you, and you should probably subscribe to get us to 600 so we can play freaking Pokemon Sword, which I've been waiting to play forever, as I decided to save the game here for no apparent. I'm like, whatever, I saved the game after the battle, because well, why not? I was like, oh no. But anyway, back to the storyline, we got freaking another person entering the scene our boy moyle wow Mulane. and he gives us the steely museum like great we're never gonna use that in our life whatever cool as we get to go against another totem that's even more annoying totem freaking i think nothing's gonna be as annoying as the alone marowak sorry aaron but totem freaking whatever that pokemon's name is i can't remember tokus maru and Tokus Mario is a part steel type. It's got spiky shield, so we were able to kind of figure that out as we were able to quiver dance on it. And then Skarmory, which is Papa Sec, like Papa's actual favorite Pokemon. Um, but that's okay. So we kind of just get destroyed, and yeah, so we have to continue this battle even further. As I don't even know kind of what we're trying to do here, but we're just quiver dancing and trying to hope that it doesn't iron head or do something stupid like that. Uh, or at least for us, it'd be stupid. But we bug buzz it we actually get a crit and i think that really was the saving factor we got a crit that's the probably the only reason that i believe we won because that crit ended up allowing us to kill the toga tomorrow and the discovery set up tailwind which is fine but we can roost and we can kind of the supporting pokemon actually aren't really as much of a problem as the totem is ever they're really more designed for support obviously because they're supposed to support the totem but it's like, they just, I, to me, they feel like they should actually be able to have attacking moves. Um, if they did, it would make it a lot harder, which would be amazing. Anyway, we beat this totem. Molain's like, holy crap, you actually beat the totem. Good job. So we have to fight Guzma now. And Guzma is the first time we've run into him. But his team, there's the Masquerade that actually will pose a threat with his icy winds and all that stuff slowing down our speed. 
which is kind of weird. I didn't expect it, but he got taken down first time. But the second time, it was a piece of cake. We kind of didn't get crit, so that helps. And we destroyed him. So then Howe's like talking to us with Gladian in the background saying, hey, you got to go to Tapu Village. But before that, everybody just keeps talking to us about everything, which is annoying. We teach Psychic because Psychic is going to be great for this Gengar in the sixth totem. Mimikyu actually posed more of a threat than I anticipated as well i can't think this is the storyline of this playthrough is pokemon pose more of a threat than i thought they would um i didn't think mimikyu would be that much of a problem but bayonet being the supporting mon actually really helped it out the other supporting mon was jellicent which i don't think we get to see yet but jellicent was another supporting mon that was very interesting but we're level 66 and this jellicent is a pokemon that gets to attack a little more it has hex and all that stuff but we ended up taking it down luckily because of the jellicent but was this the turn that we took it down? I swear it is. Yeah, okay. We took down the totem, everything else. Dazzling Gleam helped us very much. As now we have our basically almost finalized moveset with Bug Buzz, Dazzling Gleam, Roost, and uh, Quiver Dance, which is awesome. We can talk to Grimsley. And this Grimsley had a freaking Pokemon that destroyed me in a sleep or in a um, extreme randomizer, the only one that I've lost so far. But we come to this, where these Team Skull Grunts. Are like so by the way you actually have to have two Pokemon in here so this is where you officially actually cannot go past so you cannot be this game with the cutie fly only at all just saying so but I wanted to continue this run I'm like can cutie fly actually make it to the end so of course I catch a Raticate so I can just dazzle and gleam all over it and then kill it so yes yeah, so you again you cannot beat it with only a cutie fly that is the answer to the question but we're gonna see how far cutie fly can actually make it as we get to go talk to Guzma again, as Guzma wants to fight on his home turf in the shitey house. Um, and, you know, Guzma, again, still not posing as much of a threat as you would assume. Um, but that's okay, because, yeah, whatever, cool. He just doesn't pose as much of a threat, and you would think that they would, but he just doesn't. So, anyway, we destroy him, we take him down very quickly, it's fine. We get the buggy MZ, which is okay, but yeah, if anybody thinks that it's possible to beat a game in Generation 1, or not 1, Generation 3 and 7, it is impossible because of that double battle, just saying. So we can completely destroy Nanu. Nanu's totally fine. Nanu's a dark type, so of course he's fine. And now we get to go to the Aether Foundation for real, and this... Faba's like, oh, I'm going to kick you down a notch. Um, I'm going to have a psychic type. And I'm like, okay, psychic type, that's fine. I can destroy it easily. Hypno is just, <laughs> it's the easiest mon ever. So we get to go down the floor as we get kicked down. And the first mon that we get to see when we get kicked down is an Alolan Muck. And of course, if it's a Alolan Muck, it can't be anything but a Alolan Muck. I mean, a Alolan Muck's just got to be fun. And a Alolan Muck, actually, we beat it, which is awesome. And then Magneton. I'm like, of course, another mon that we don't like. But luckily, attack specially, so we're good. And the final mon was a freaking Porygon, too. And I'm like, okay, the easiest of the three. Great. The last one was the easiest. We took it down easily. We get to beat these two grunts and find out that Nebby is actually a legendary Pokemon. And they're like, oh my god, we gotta save her. And um, we get to go a 2v2 battle against these grunts. And actually, this kind of was a funny moment in the playthrough because you really look at this and you're like, okay, well, this guy has a Magmar and a Electabuzz. So that already just spells disaster for Cutie Fly. And because it's a double battle, they can both target into me, no problem. This freaking Electabuzz looks on one and we get paralysis which is which was of course it did but then we have the new mons we have hound doom and freaking another electric type in manectric and we kind of just get obliterated very easily as he roars us out which is kind of interesting he can't roar us out but yeah we get destroyed and it's Gladion versus the other person and Gladion actually ends up taking the victory I thought that because you know in some Pokemon games it's like, oh, unfortunately, you died, so everybody else died. This game actually patched that, which was actually a very cool thing to see that it actually got patched. But that's totally fine, as we get to fight Faba now. And Faba was way easier, because he has a psychic types. So Faba kind of just gets recaronied by everything. So bye, Faba. Have a great rest of your day. Um, sorry you get destroyed, but yeah. So that's kind of what happened. Faba gets annihilated. Everybody kind of just has a great time and we get to go fight guzma again for the third time in like 12 15 minutes and freaking guzma out here emergency exit he's got a pincer this time and this pincer has stone edge so it actually is a little bit more of a threat but still not as much of a threat as you would anticipate as we gotta destroy him easily cutie fly wants to evolve he can't 
And freaking this freaking Solaria out here, we beat her with the freaking crit, which is awesome. And Lusamine we get freaking destroyed by. But apparently, you don't have to beat Lusamine in order for the game to continue, which is so dumb because she's the freaking mob boss. But we get to go to Pony Island, and Pony Island doesn't pose much of a threat until we kind of get further into Pony Island as we go to the Team Skull, and Team Skull, again, has nothing too much to worry about. We kind of beat it senselessly. We lost first because we weren't healed up, but because we, like, went to the Pokemon Center, we were totally fine. And, yeah, so we took care of the Team Skull, and it wasn't really that much of a threat. And then we had to fight Solaria again after freaking um, Plumeria gave us the Poisonium Z, which is awesome. But... I have to fight Solaria again, and Solaria is getting on my nerves a little bit at level 49, as sidekicks are doing absolutely nothing. It was a four-hit KO still, and Hapu's like, oh, you can go ahead and fight the Ace Trainers, and I'm like, oh, the Ace Trainers? That sounds amazing. Well, this first Ace Trainer has an Alolan Graveler. That's a problem, so <laughs> we died instantaneously. That's fine, though. We got to fight him again, and when we fought him the second time, he wasn't as bad. I mean, he could have still hit us but we beat him pretty easily as we just annihilate him i think with the bug buzz because that's our strongest move this, i was kind of debating what was better and i think bug buzz yeah i chose bug buzz bug buzz was to a ko and then this girl's a talent flame i'm like of course you do gale wings it up girl oh i was so mad but we ended up beating her which is fine and dandy as it took us a couple times i think it took us like six to seven times because we're level 80 now so we had to have attempted it a couple times as we destroyed her and this guy was super easy it was like of course the middle girl was the hardest one of the four by far or the three excuse me and then as we defeat this it's like okay cool that was easy we go into the totem and i'm like oh we can smack this up with a freaking dazzling gleam but game freak actually did something good that i can praise them for and made this actually way more competitive than i would have anticipated ever i go ahead and click the dazzling gleam because i'm like oh it'll be good it eats the roselli berry that halves the damage of the moves i'm like okay awesome and it calls an ally pokemon i'm like what would it be and it's a scissor scissor is literally another pokemon that cutie fly cannot handle to save its life at all as bug buzz is absolutely nothing so we need to have fun the actually like, actually was sitting here with aaron when i was doing this battle i'm like oh god what am i supposed to do as we lose multiple times again and again and again and i got to laugh with aaron a little bit because one of these attempts which is coming up really shortly it was me against the tapu or uh, kamo'o and I click Dazzling Gleam and crit it. I crit it. And that's the only way we were able to get through this battle. Because I didn't want to be super overleveled. And the fact that the crit was the only reason that we got past this was insanity. So, of course, we get to blow the flutes with Lily. And we get to have fun with Ultra Necrozma. Not Ultra Necrozma. Dusk Wing Lunala. And then Ultra Necrozma. Now... And this is gonna be another scenario where I was talking to Aaron, and we're level 100 at this point, seeing if I can actually beat it without getting the focus sash, and we can. So of course I'm in tatters. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? And Aaron's like, what about a focus sash? I was like, oh my god, you're so right, Aaron. I can get the focus sash, and it'll be all fine and dandy. Until I realized the focus sash is another thing that requires you to have a second mod because you have to beat a double battle person. Of course you do. So this is a second instance where you cannot beat it with out using a cutie fly so that is definitely impossible for you to beat it with only cutie fly it does not work at all because you have to get a second mon before for you can even fight the person i'm fighting right now so you cannot beat it with cutie fly only but i end up going and getting the focus sash and we get the focus sash we do our thing and you know this is where i could have ended the video but i was like i kind of got this far i kind of need to beat this and go to the Elite Four. So after you do this, right, at level 96, I believe, we finally are able to one-shot the Necrozma as it finally happened. But yeah, so of course, I'm like, I'm about to be at the Elite Four. I am just going to do the rest of the work, get the Elite Four, you know, whatever. I need to talk about the Elite Four anyway, because the Elite Four made me so crazy, but you'll find out anyway. Mina goes and tells us we have to fight all the other freaking trainers. We destroy Lima for the second time, as Lima, again, still has absolutely nothing for our team. Um, freaking Lana has nothing for our team either. Like, basically, nobody had anything for our team, so it was easy. Even, Co like, Co um, whatever this guy's name, had one thing for our team, and that's it. He had a little in Marowak, which was a pain, but 
that's okay. As this Nanu has nothing, so it's like again super easy to even get into this trial. As this trial was actually way easier than I anticipated it. Um, I thought this one was gonna be a little harder because its stats are raised plus two, but it's we can kind of match it and it's fine. As we destroy the Blissey, Blissey takes a couple hits, but that's it. And she's like, and we fight Hapu. When Hapu's easy too, I'm like, everything's kind of super easy because we're level 96. I would be a little scared if it wasn't easy. And we continue on. We beat the Flygon. We beat the Ground Type Trainer. And this guy, uh, uh, Gladian, has freaking Crobat, which is an issue, but we psychic it. And it ends up being okay. So again, Gladian, not as much of a threat as you would assume it would be, but. Yeah, we take on Gladium and beat him up easily as we finally get to the end of Victory Road. We get to go to have fun against the Elite Four. This Elite Four made me so crazy I freaking snorted kale chips. Don't question it. I got $30 for it. And freaking, okay, so Olivia's the first one and she is difficult because her first Pokemon's Armado. So we have to Quiver Dance on the Elmardo. Um, and the only way that we win is if she hits me three or less times. If she doesn't hit me less than three times we lose this match she ended up going for crush claw which is awesome as that's really what propelled us to victory in this game now provo pass is an issue too because the sand and paralysis so we get to deal with paralysis issues but we ended up taking her out it took the longest to take her out we found a strategy for mobile lane we got roost instead of energy ball which ended up helping out significantly he automatically starts with paralyzing you so you kind of have to hope that you don't get paralyzed hacks but we quiver dance all up on him and that's basically what propels us to victory in this one um you have to hope you don't get paralyzed hacks though because if you get paralyzed hacks it is game over game set match have a great day for you and this thing was annoying it had sturdy and full restore i'm like of course you know one of the elite four members have to have something annoying so of course Melane was the one so we taught psychic for the ghost leader and uh, acerola again she was the easiest of the elite four members you literally just spam dazzling gleam or psychic and you are fine dazzling gleam preferably if you have them but yeah you're totally fine with her now kahili another elite four member which we're gonna get to here in a second she you have to get a high roll on her Braviary. If you don't get a high roll on your Braviary at level 100, you will basically perish. And the only reason we did not perish is we got a low roll. The low roll saved us, and we get to go ahead and take on the champion, How once again. And How kind of, again, proves to be not too much of an issue as he leads with a little and Raiju, so we can kind of set up on it and have no problem with the rest of his team as we get to plus, like, five as we kind of just destroy How. So... That ends up being the end of can you beat Pokemon Ultra Moon with a cutie fly? The answer to can you beat cutie or Ultra Moon with a cutie fly is actually no, you cannot because you have to have mandatory double battles. There is one of them that's mandatory, and you cannot beat the Ultra Necrozma without a second one, so it is impossible. But anyway, Gen 7 and 3, anytime that happens, it is impossible. But anyway. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let's see if we can get to 600 subscribers so we can get the Switch and have everything awesome and be fun. Um, if we can get more, that'd be great. Make sure, let's see if we can push this into recommended. You never know what can happen. Anyway, I love you all. Have a great night. Peace.